Electronic Arts has always been extraordinarily strong in cartridge games, in particular in their sports arena, and uh, they felt they had a weakness in the high-end PC-style games, which is where Origin, of course, has always been strong. Well, Pacific, uh, as you mentioned, as its name implies, is a Pacific theater campaign game, uh, very much in the Wing Commander, Strike Commander game genre style. The game itself, however, will, of course, is based in the Strike Commander style of engine. Many of the core uh, graphics and other subroutines are, in fact, uh, derivative, derived from Strike Commander. However, one of the first main changes they've made in that product was try to speed it up. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, in particular, there is one other product in, in development right now, uh, which is a World War I aircraft game where uh, you fly a sock with camels and biplanes and triplanes uh, in a World War I setting. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Wing Commander 3 was, uh, uh, has been in development really for about six months. Whereas Wing 2, in my mind, was a derivative form of Wing 1, some enhancements to the engine, Wing 3 is really a complete rewrite over Wing 2. And so the product style uh, will be considerably improved. For example, not only is the core 3D engine improved uh, to take on some of the features that people have seen in Strike Commander, for example, but also the game cinematic. The first three Ultimas, which were really Richard Garriott learns how to write computer games, uh, had very little association with each other and were largely a a collect treasure and eventually could defeat the big evil bad guy game. The next trilogy, Ultimus 4, 5, and 6, became the Avatar trilogy, a trilogy where the character was trying to prove themselves to be a person of good virtue. And uh, uh, the storylines, of course, uh, uh, led to those goals, and there were no major antagonists really in the game. Ultimus 7, 8, and 9 now are my exploration of what you might call the dark side of the Force. In 7, we have uh, introduced this new ultimate evil character, the Guardian, who will be with us now for 7, 8, and 9. Uh, and in Ultima 7, he tries to come into the world of Britannia and take over, but you can stop him. In Ultima 8, the reverse happens. He, in fact, takes you to his home world of Pagan. Uh, so the world you're dropped in for the first time now is no longer Britannia. Uh, it's far more sinister. None of your allies, your usual allies and friends, Lord British or Dupre or any of those characters are with you. Uh, none of your original Avatar magic is even functional and uh, uh, the mood of the world you're in is far more sinister. Uh, and so this game is a very dark game. Uh, the trilogy will be wrapped up with Ultima 9, which is called Ascension, which will be your final climactic battle with the Guardian. I would include the character Lord British in my computer games, of course, and then when I began to write down at the, on the title screen who created the game, I began to put Richard Garriott and Lord British as on the title heads. Well, my first publisher, which is California Pacific, who got a hold of one of my first games and saw this by Richard Garriott and Lord British uh, on the top of the game, you know, asked me and I told them the story and they said, well, you know, Richard Garriott is not a very memorable name. Lord British, on the other hand, would be a great marketing hook. And uh, so Richard Garriott disappeared into obscurity and uh, Lord British became the author of all my games. Hmm. Well, the vast majority of Origin products have been developed in-house and all of my personal products have been. In the future, I'm confident that my personal products will generally be done that way, but if, you, if the question is really meant for Origin, uh, even though we have a focus on in-house games, we really believe that that is because of the uh, economic model that our industry is currently set up with. It is not because of our innate belief that, they, uh, that better games are designed when in-house. It's just that as products become uh, larger and larger financial endeavors, uh, it takes bigger and bigger teams to put them together, and you, when you're spending a million plus dollars on a product, you need to have a great deal of confidence in the developer uh, who is putting that product together for you. We will probably continue in the foreseeable future to use either in-house development or uh, outside developers with who have a, a you know, good, strong track record. Of course, we continue the Ultima product line going and we'll continue the Commander product line going. Uh, and each of those product lines represents, of course, a, a great deal of money to the company. Uh, but we are on a constant quest to find that next large product line. One direction we're trying to push very hard, and this is not just at Origin, but within Electronic Arts worldwide, is we are doing, trying to do research into interactive movies. The phrase interactive movies, we realize, is used by many people to mean many different kinds of things, but we're trying to develop a product line that gives you the audio-visual impact of a television or movie-like experience, but giving you interactivity as well. We have one product in, uh, in development right now called Bioforge, which will be out this spring. Uh, that is our first step, or at least our, my first step, into the interactive movie arena. Since the technology is changing so rapidly, when you buy a sequel, you really are getting 
a completely different game, a much better game than its predecessor usually if the sequel was done well. Sequels allow you to take a, uh, a property which you enjoy and continue to enjoy it with an improving game each time you play it. And so I believe the phenomenon of sequels is really here to stay as long as the hardware platforms continue to evolve as rapidly as they do. Now through our merger with Electronic Arts, you know, we are combined, we are now number one by more than a factor of two over any other company. And so I no longer look at our other, comp uh, other companies in our field as direct competitors. We actually see our competitors no longer as other software companies, but we're now looking the next step up to the Sonys, the Time Warners, uh, and the other global communications companies uh, as, as our next target. I definitely believe our industry is still a technology-based industry. I believe that uh, when it comes to the saleability of a product, that uh, the audiovisual content, which is largely technology-driven, is in fact a larger aspect of its saleability than is the actual storyline or fictional content. I had been largely fed up with previous publishers and so was ready to go off on my own. Uh, when uh, my elder brother Robert was finishing up his second master's degree, uh, from he had one master's degree from uh, Stanford and another master's degree from MIT, and uh, he was ready to go begin a, a company of his own as well, and so it was a good time for us to start a company together. Founded the company with uh, an enormous amount of money, $70,000. Uh, went into business uh, in our parents' garage, as a matter of fact. Back in those early days, uh, you know, we did all the different aspects of it. Now that we produced the products, Ultima 3 was our first uh, product through Origin. But we also folded up the boxes ourselves, packed the boxes ourselves, shipped them out ourselves, duplicated the discs, the whole bit. The full logo actually was, Others Write Software, We Create Worlds. And uh, that really exemplified our belief that the kind of product we were developing were not your standard arcade game. They were not a standard uh, uh, audiovisual visual shoot 'em up uh, And instead, we were trying to create games with depth, with uh, story, uh, with longevity, uh, and things with some, some, some kind of intrinsic value. For the first five years of origin history, uh, we were largely an Apple developer. And that was because, to a large degree, I was an Apple developer. And I was a very much, and still am to, to a degree, uh, very much of an Apple enthusiast. I went through the, the denial phase of saying, no, 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 the Apple is a better platform, it's the nicer platform, it's where we should really be, so I'm going to continue developing for the Apple, because in the end, it must win. Well, that nearly put us out of business. Uh, there was a year where literally we had developed and you know, we, had, we could see six months down the road that all the, all the product we were developing for the Apple II platform were going to have no market. And uh, we did a very expensive retooling to bring the entire company from the Apple market onto the IBM PC market. We are very much market driven. Whatever platform is winning, I assure you that is the platform that we will be developing products for. Origin's philosophy has generally been to see what platform is succeeding the best and then we will produce the very best products on it. Ideas are generated by the uh, uh, company as a whole. All the members of any team or, or within the entire organization as a whole really do contribute into this ongoing pool of ideas. We are now in the era where the, the cost of doing an individual production is so high that only with the backing of a studio can you consider putting such an endeavor together. Obviously I find this a, a very exciting industry to be in. Uh, and I plan on being in it for quite some time into the future. I've seen the emergence of 32-bit activities that are kind of blurring the line between computers and video games. Uh, and honestly, uh, uh, my real thrill comes from riding the crest of this wave. I consider a very tricky game to play, to, to play the cat and mouse game of how to stay on the edge, not too far ahead, but not get too far behind because it's difficult to catch up.